Hello everyone, this is Nielsen Ukles from the Ordix POS development team and um, I'm here to give you guys an EMV update on the webinar that we uh, scheduled a couple weeks back. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let's just begin right away. I want to go over with what we previously covered just a little bit. Um, there have been a couple of changes. Um, this will be mostly a review, uh, a couple of updates and some questions session. So as you can see here, the stuff that's already covered, I'm going to still go over it, review it very quickly, but it is in gray. So that what's EMB, the liability shift, how it's going to be implemented. And um, what the has changed, however, <coughs> excuse me, what has changed is the tip adjustment, some of the hardware options, and uh, I actually have the receipts pictures that we told you guys last time that we were going to show you. I'm going to show you guys how the receipt is going to look like now with the new tip adjustment procedures that EMV is going to demand. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you guys see here, um, we covered this before. Nothing really changed, of course, is what is EMV and why. And EMV stands for European MasterCard and Visa. It was published by, by them in 1995. Now, the reason that came about is because uh, in order to basically pr provide a better way to have these transactions go through uh, in a more secure way fashion so that it's not so easy for any third-party person, any criminal person, come here and basically try to get that information for the transaction so that they may use it for their own purposes. This is going to make it harder for them because it's going to be encrypted with algorithms, algorithms such as 3DS, RSA, and SHA. Um, only other thing here to cover would be that chip and pin is the way that most of Europe, Canada, and Australia have implemented EMV. Here in the United States, we're going to be implementing chip and sign. Now this uh, liability shift again, something we covered before. Um, the main thing you want to grasp from here is that uh, basically when it, for the merchant's uh, point of, of view, they don't necessarily have to implement EMV. They don't have to use EMV capable systems, even be certified systems. They can just uh, keep going business as they are right now because uh, EMV is not going to be a mandate. It's not a, a, any kind of law that, that they have to follow, that they have to implement this. However, Sure, uh, merchants choose not to use e uh, EMB transactions or not to use EMB capable systems. They will be uh, fall under what it's called a liability shift, which means that uh, any transactions that are not EMB certified, or in other words, they're not going through that EMB chip reader, they will fall under the merchant's liability should something happen with the transaction, whether it was fraudulent or there was a chargeback. Um, Basically, uh, it will no longer be on the credit card and in the bank's end to, to really worry about liability. It will be on the merchant should they choose not to use EMV capable systems or EMV certified systems. Now, the good thing is, of course, for the Ordix merchants, uh, Ordix is going to be EMV capable, fully ready to go. By the time October 2015 comes around, um, the only thing that the merchant would have to do is get the appropriate terminals from their credit card processors and uh, they'll be good to go, so no worries for them. Now, <clears throat> implementing EMV stays the same, of course. Uh, we went over the three types of integrations where there's no integration, where uh, basically it's just a standalone terminal, and then uh, the, it pretty much processes everything on its own. It doesn't communicate with the Ordix system. Uh, there's also semi-integrated, which is the route that Ordix is going to go, as well as most of the POS customers, companies for restaurants and retails, etc. They'll be going the semi-integrated route, and what this means is going to be standalone terminals that also communicate with the point of sale system in order to uh, let the, the point of sale system know that the transaction went through, it was approved, and all that. All the POS system is going to do is basically provide the information as far as uh, the, the actual charge itself, for example, what's the total, what's the tip. All, all that information gets passed to the terminal by the point of sale system, and then the terminal processes, of course, because it's an uh, EMV uh, transaction and then returns the result over to the POS. Now, <clears throat> the fully integrated route, um, this is what the most lo the large national retail retailers are going to go with. That's going to be Walmart, your targets. They're going with what is a fully integrated implementation. And what that means is basically their point of sale system itself is the credit card processing terminal as well. Um, what they'll have probably is they'll have an EMV reader attached to their system and that's what they're going to use to process their transaction. We're not going to go that route uh, right off the bat. We're looking into doing fully integration in the future. Now, this is the only thing that uh, that has, well, I'm sorry, not the only thing, but it's one of the things that has changed. 
as you can see in gray, uh, an explanation of how currently tips are, are handled right now, whereas the tip adjustment works right now after the customer leaves. Uh, they check the tip on that receipt and adjust it as accordingly. So right now, how EMV is going to try to be implemented, or rather how they know we know it's going to be implemented. I apologize for that. And the, they're not going to be any tip adjustment after the fact, after the customer leaves. The tip adjustment has to now be or not really much of a tip adjustment, but basically the tip has to be added to the initial transaction. So in other words, the customer will have to specify how much tip he wants to put before the credit card gets processed. So it's going to work similar to the project, um, not project management, property management systems work. The receipt is now going to come with a line that says tip and give the customer the, the, the ability to total that up to whatever that they want it to be. Now, how they're going to implement EMV in the future, and we didn't mention this before, but it was kind of like a, uh, we, we knew that it was, it was going to be done, but we weren't sure who was going to do it and, and how they were going to agree with it. But we've got more word from the partners that we work with, the people that we know from the credit card processors, and that they were saying that they will for sure have this tip adjustment uh, in the future for uh, after the customer leaves. But not only that, but they are expecting it to be done by first quarter in 2016. Of course, they expect it. It's not necessarily confirmed. But the good news here is that this is going to be kind of like across the board, across all the processors. They're going to want to implement this, of course, in, in thinking of the, the restaurant industry and the hospitality industry such as us. Um, that is really the reason for for this new change that they're going to want to implement. Again, it's not confirmed, but effectively, uh, the moment they confirm, you guys will know because this is going to be kind of like a monthly update that we're going to be doing to you guys, so that you guys are always aware of any EMV changes that are going to be happening that are going to affect the Oryx customers. So again, expected uh, quarter first quarter 2016, not confirmed, and let's move on. <clears throat> now. This is also uh, one of the things that changed, small change, but uh, change nonetheless. As you see, of course, our chart of credit card payment processors here and the and the major credit card terminal problem companies, rather, sorry, that they're going to be implementing with. Of course, you have all these guys that we mentioned last time. The only change that you're going to notice here, and it's kind of highlighted a little bit, is that GPS now is going to support Ingenical terminals. Um, everything else here stays the same. We're going to have uh, this this presentation put up on YouTube so you guys can kind of go back and review this in case you need to look but effectively these are going to be uh, the, the typical payment process that you probably are most familiar with and what they're going to be using for as far as EMV terminals and with that in mind of course these hardware options haven't really changed here from before is Verifone and their VX520, the MX915 and the MX925s of course VX805 as well um, that's what the Verifone uh, is going to have available for us to integrate with. These are the ones basically that as soon as uh, October 2015 rolls around, Ordex will be available to integrate with these terminals right off the bat. Also the Ingenica ones, the ICT220, ICT250. And um, this is a wireless model here to the right, IWL250. That one's going to be available in 2015 December. And uh, what's important about this is that Whenever, whenever that uh, tip adjustment change happens, regardless of that, you can use these wireless terminals so that you can take this terminal over to the customer's table and uh, have the customer basically put their card in there, um, insert the tip that they want to put, and press go and press OK and let it go through. And that's going to make it so that you don't have this, uh, I guess, a strange dynamic that would happen now, whereas before the customer is used to putting a tip and just leaving the restaurant and then you know, forgetting about what the server may think of that, but now you have to, uh, with the EMV, that you would have to put that tip and, of course, give it to the server. And, you know, it changes that social dynamic a little bit. Uh, you can kind of mitigate this dynamic now with these wireless terminals where, of course, you just send it to the customer, let the customer kind of press OK, press Next on that terminal, and then just kind of leave it there and leave, leave the store after they're done. Um, and then, of course, the server doesn't even have to be directly involved right then and there. They just pick it up when it's done. Uh, again, these will not be available right now until December 2015. This is for Ingenico. And uh, I'm going to go to the next guy here, which is PAX. Same thing again as before, uh, MT330, FSP30. And they also will have a wireless model, the D210. And again, that also will be available in December 2015. 
Uh, we specifically mentioned these because these ones we, we were going to be integrating with as soon as they come out. So be on the lookout for them. And I mentioned this before in the last CMV uh, webinar, and I just wanted to reiterate that Verifone, <clears throat> they do have a wireless terminal in the works. They've not given us a date when it's going to be available, which is why we didn't list it. But Verifone will eventually have a wireless credit card terminal as well. <clears throat> this hasn't changed either as far as uh, what Oryx plans to do in the future and what we're looking into. And uh, I did mention where as far as the, the way that you can integrate with EMB, there's a fully uh, way to integrate where it's just the POS system running the entire transaction from the beginning to the end. And um, we're planning to have that. Uh, we're planning to, to have that implemented in Nordics as well. We're looking that into that for 2016. And uh, one of the ways that we're thinking about doing it is uh, looking into these EMB uh, readers that basically attach to a device such as an iOS device. And then basically you insert the card there, have the P Oryx POS process that transaction and then they will be in a fully integrated way. Obviously, the advantage here would be that you don't have to buy a separate credit card terminal for you to get for you to process these transactions, and you just have this little extra attachment. So again, these are, are ways that we're going to be able to do that, such as the Verifone E255 and the Ingenico. And again, this is for the future. This time, let you guys know what we're looking at and have an idea of, of where we're going with this. Um, oh, hey, and here's your receipt. This is going to be the, the new the, the new receipt now uh, as soon as EMV gets switched over. Uh, in the middle there, you're going to see it's the first copy that the customer is going to receive. And the customer is going to receive their order there with what they ordered. They're going to have uh, the ability to add a tip, total it up. They're going to then take this receipt, hand it back to the server. The server is going to go back to the terminal. They're going to process the, the, the transaction, print out two receipts. One is going to be the customer copy on the left. And on the right, you're going to see the copy that you guys get, the merchant, rather, goods it's going to get to keep. And um, they're just going to be able to sign in that signature uh, line right there and give it back to the server. Um, so that's it. I, I will also, again, this is going to be on YouTube, so you guys can get a better look at this later. Uh, but there you have that copy that we promised. So we're going to uh, have some questions that I'm going to read out to you guys and then answer right away. Um, I just wanted to say the next EMB webinar update is going to be on the September 30th of this month, of course, of this year. Um, and until then, of course, uh, if the questions that we answer here today uh, still leave things unclear or you're still not sure about them, some things or some of your questions were not answered, you can go ahead and call, give us a call back at 24-7 support line, which is 561-807-1503. So I'm going to go ahead and begin reading these questions for you real quick. And let's see, I have one here, number one. It's going to be, can merchants opt out of the Oryx software update for EMB? And uh, you can definitely opt out of the update. It is not mandatory to do EMB. So uh, it's not going to be something that's going to be forced upon the, the merchant. They have the option to, to not do it. Of course, uh, the, when you're not running the EMB transactions, you are then liable as soon as that cutover happens for any transactions that may be deemed fraudulent or or it's a chargeback, the merchant, it will fall on the merchants and as far as liability is concerned because of the new EMB standard. Now, the second question I have here, um, how would they be able to handle if it did not go through with an EMB and stay with swiping, with just swiping the card and getting a signed copy kept on file? Now, of course, they can do that. That wouldn't be necessarily different than what is done right now. But uh, if they're not, if they're not going through the EMB through the EMB card reader, where it reads the chip on the card, and um, basically it's not going to be an EMB transactions. And then only EMB cards that are ran through that EMB chip reader will be considered an EMB transaction. And of course, if it's not considered an EMB transaction, if there's any problems with that transaction, and it will be under the merchant's liability. <clears throat> Now, third question I have here is, what do we do if a merchant says that they just don't want to go to EMB? Um, all you have to do basically is explain to them how the liability ship works. Tell them, hey, you know, it's not mandatory. You don't have to go through this. Um, it's just uh, you have to now make a calculated risk about uh, you were able to see, okay, um, especially the payment processor should have this information. You know, how many of these cards, how many of the transactions, rather the percentage or proportion of transactions, how many of them turn out to be fraudulent? And um, you know, you got to make an educated decision and say, you know what, uh, maybe this, this this concern us, maybe this is not concern us. But uh, all you have to do is explain to them that, you know, knowing if there's not AMV, 
then uh, you are liable for any transactions that may be deemed fraudulent. And um, yeah, let them know. Question number four. Do we have to purchase a specific brand or type of card reader? Um, basically, whatever it is that you're going to purchase for EMV transactions, you have to go through your payment processor first. Make sure that it's first supported, that it's configured to work with them. These terminals, uh, you can't just buy them and say, okay, I'm going to get them to work. Uh, every terminal, no matter the model, has to be configured to work and communicate with a specific credit card payment processor. So that's the first thing you have to check with them. After you check with them, you come back and check with us to confirm that it is compatible with Oryx as far as uh, – uh, not, not compatible, and I should say that if it's integrated with Oryx so that you can do that semi integration, um, you want to check with us, of course. Uh, it is always an option for it not to be integrated with Oryx, and you will run that as what we now call an external debit or external credit transaction. The downside is, of course, that you're left to do manual work to, to in order to reconcile what you ran through your credit card terminal and what is in the Oryx system. Um, but you really want to make sure you, you check with us always anytime you want to buy these. Uh, credit card processing terminals before you commit to them. So question number five, can the EMV terminal be plugged into the same Ethernet port as the receipt printer using an Ethernet splitter? And then yes, you can absolutely do that, although we always recommend to do a separate drop. You can avoid uh, issues in, on your network if you, if you do that, although you're, you're perfectly in, within your ability to do so. Um, one thing I do want to note, though, is that some of these credit card processing terminals, they have a built-in splitter. So you have, like, uh, one drop, you're going to the back of that, uh, that credit card processing terminal, and it also has uh, two other slots to come out that oh, – not two other slots. It'll have one more slot so that you can plug into your POS terminal there. So then they'll share essentially the same drop. Uh, that's probably a little bit more reliable than maybe the – the splitter but regardless though um, we've seen issues arise when, when when you're dealing with that one point uh, with that one little splitter um, it may not necessarily have the capabilities built in to handle a certain you know the, the type the amount of traffic that may go through um, and obviously it depends per model so basically what we like to say is that if you don't have to do that don't go that route make sure you get a separate drop uh, if you feel yourself that you must be forced to use so um, it will work so and this sort of decision that you have to make, of course. So let's move on to the say in the next question, question number six. If the transaction is challenged and the merchant has signed the receipt, how will they be able to handle it? Well, basically, once that EMV cutover happens, and assuming that that challenge transaction was not an EMV transaction, then the merchant will be liable for it. Um, if it was not, if it is an EMV transaction, then they don't even have to worry about it. It's going to be on the credit card processing end and not the merchant end. So question number seven. So if they don't go to EMV, the merchant has to turn down all Ordex updates until they go to EMV. And no, not necessarily, because the way that we're going to do it is um, Ordex is going to be able to update no matter what, and it's going to continue to working no matter what. Whether or not the merchant chooses to use EMV, we're going to have an ability so that uh, per the merchant store, we can turn off EMV so that they, they're able to process credit cards as they normally would right now. Um, they don't have to switch over to the EMV mode to run these credit cards. But uh, we're not planning on doing that forever. Uh, it'll probably be sometime mid next year so that we will allow that option to. But uh, eventually, we expect the merchants to fully move over to EMV. We're allowing this option to remain there so that the cutover is not this hard thing that they have to move over to, but they're able to you know, gradually implement the systems that they need to, or, or maybe the credit card processing uh, company is, has run into issues and are not able to get these uh, terminals out. Uh, we are going to allow the option to not have to use EMV at all. And, and again, that will not be an option in for that will be there forever. It's going to be something that we plan to turn off eventually uh, sometime next year. So we got question uh, number eight. The law reads, the merchant is, is responsible for any fraud that results from transactions ran on non-EMB capable systems. So cards still can be run with the magnetic strip. Or rather, can't, the question is rather phrased. So can't cards still be run with the magnetic strip and still be covered in the shift of liability as long as the terminal is EMB capable? and still be able to adjust the tip, the current rate. Now, <clears throat> basically now these, well, the majority of the ones that I've seen anyways, the right now that we're gonna integrate with, the, these EMV processing terminals, 
they have the ability to run the magnetic strike, the magnetic strip, basically. So you can still swipe a card that's not EMB on those. They have the ability. You see, like, there's two slots. You have the slot that reads the card, and then the side, you usually have the slot where you slide the card. Now, that's only because they the, the EMV processing companies that are going to be creating these terminals, they know that not all cars are going to have that chip. And uh, that means that you, you can still run those other cars that don't have the chip through the magnetic stripe reader, but it's still not going to be an EMV transaction. Even though the terminal itself has capabilities for EMV, what, what really defines an EMV transaction is not so much that the terminal is capable or that the system is capable, is the fact that when you put that card in that EMV chip reader, the whole transaction is run between that credit card chip and that credit card processing terminal. And that's really what makes it an EMV transaction. And that's because that's what implements these new uh, algorithms and new encryption algorithms, algorithms excuse me, to, to uh, process this transaction to make it secure. And because if, if you don't run it through that, then basically you're not, you, there's these new protections and these new standards are not being applied. So, of course, the banks are going to say, well, you know what, that's, that's not ran through this new secure system where it's, it's your liability. It's, it's your problem if something wrong happens. Um, so that, that's really the key thing here is, is, is that credit card chip is being inserted into the credit card chip reader and is processed to run the transaction. That is, in essence, what's going to be an EMV transaction. And um, there's a couple of the questions about that, that I'll, I'll explain a little bit further as far as the card not present transactions, but that's basically how it's going to work. So to sum it all up, it will not, if it's not done that way, it's not going to be covered by the liability shift. Or in other words, um, that liability will then shift over to the merchant if it's not ran through the credit card chip reader. I have another question here. Um, all terminals until December 2015 will be connected to a terminal, correct? And I think what this is trying to ask is about the, the ones that are wireless and the ones that are not. Uh, for the most part, the ones that are going to be available right off the bat that we integrate with, they will be wired to the Ethernet jack or the, to the Ethernet drop. And they will not be wireless. Um, and Genico and PAX will have wireless models available into the summer 2015 that we'll be able to integrate with right away. Um, until then, um, the, all the ones that we have so far that we have already available to integrate with, they will be wired ones. Um, and to, to mention again, the Verifone will eventually have a wireless one as well. I have another question here regarding the, the tip adjustment. So, this is, so the customers will have to walk to EMV terminal location, and and that, that's not necessarily true. What as in, as far as the tip adjustment concerns, and, and just to kind of walk over that again, um, you're gonna get a the customer is gonna receive a receipt, and it's gonna have the tip line and the total line, so that they're able to add the tip to the one and get the total. They're gonna hand that over to the server, and the server will, then is gonna is gonna walk back to the terminal, process the the information that they need, print out the the two receipts one for them and one for the customer copy and of course uh, the one for them is going to have a signature line where the customer signs and they keep it and they're good to go uh you were able to go back to the slide and look at that receipt i'm actually going to put that up right there and see how that's going to work um but effectively the customer doesn't have to do any walking although you could make them walk over to the front line some restaurants do but um effectively you just have to make the server do what they normally do right now now next question the units you showed are the only units that Ordex will integrate with, and that's not necessarily true. What that means is that these are units that I, I've showed you guys, they're basically the ones that are going to be ready to go in October 2015. So Ordex is going to be ready to use those models that I showed you earlier. Um, these guys right here. Nope. There you go. So these guys right here, Pax's models and Genico's models, these guys are going to be ready to go as soon as the EMV cutover happens so what that means basically as as these credit card companies or credit card processing terminal companies are going to be adding more models then we'll be adding more models that we integrate with um, if there's any particular model that we don't integrate with you can always call us and let us know and that we'll look up that model we'll see the specs and then that we'll definitely can look into integrate with them um, but it, this is not like a, a, a hard card off where this is the only thing we're going to do. It's just that what's available right away is to get you guys prepped up and say, okay, well, you know, if I want to buy terminals, I can probably look into these here. I can look into a couple of these and basically give you the choice before it happens. Before the switch goes over, we want to make sure that you guys, you know, you don't just wait until the cutover and say, oh, well, what do we interview with? I just want you guys to see 
what we have ready to go and you guys will know that we'll be able to work with without an issue. Um, and again, regardless of, of, of anything, before you buy it, you talk to the processor, make sure it's okay with them, make sure it works with them. And then after that, you call us. Okay. So next question, how would tips be adjusted for pizza delivery? Are pizza delivery not affected by EMB? So the tips will have to be specified at the time of payments because tip adjustments on the EMB cannot be done after the card is processed, as I explained earlier. But the transactions done with the card, or rather also transactions that are not done when the card is not present are not EMB transactions. So presumably a pizza delivery is called over the phone. And then so the customer is giving you the information for the credit card over the phone. And that's what we considered or what is really considered by the industry as a card not present transaction. You know, the card's not presently at the restaurant. When you get the information, you're receiving that over the phone or through whatever other method. And uh, you put that in the terminal. And that because, uh, of course, when you're doing that, you're just keying that in the terminal. You're not really going through that chip interface on that card. You're not really uh, having the terminal communicate with that chip because it has to be physically there. So because that card is not physically there, there's no way for that card to physically interact with the chip reader on that terminal. Therefore, it will not be an EMV transaction and um, it will be, should anything happen with that transaction in the case that it comes back as a fraudulent charge or a challenge, and in a way, the liability will then fall on the merchant. Now, here's another question. Will we still need to keep the signed copy of receipts? <clears throat> well, if your credit card terminal supports what we call as a signature capture, where you're able to go on a terminal and it has a screen that the customer can sign right on that screen, then Oryx will actually save that signature onto the Oryx database, and then you're able to access that anytime. You can also print out a, a copy of the receipt with that signature saved. So in that case, you won't necessarily need to keep those signed receipts um, because, of course, you already have it in our database. But um, if not, then, yeah, you will have to keep that signed receipt because that's there's no other way to keep it, right? You won't be able to uh, save it any other way. So you can look into some of those models that do the signature capture because uh, the ones that we support, of course, and now uh, you'll be able to save that there and save yourself having to save all those paperwork. Now, I have one more question here. It says, uh, is a chargeback the only form of fraud the merchant will be held responsible for? And this is kind of like a sum up question to kind of say how it's going to work. Rather, my, my answer is pretty much going to sum it all up in, in a way that it's going to be that Merchants are only liable for fraudulent non-EMV transactions. So if it's not non-EMV and it was fraudulent, it's going to fall on the merchant. If it was an EMV transaction and it was fraudulent, the merchant doesn't have to worry about it. That's basically how the the contract, as you would say, of, of EMV is going to be in, in the way that uh, the credit card companies want to implement it, is that they, they have a more secure method to do this transaction and they're happy to take that liability only if it happened through the secure method. But um, if it's not done through the secure transaction, which is EMV, then uh, it, it will fall on the merchant. Uh, but I, this is actually the last question here. So how will tabs work? Well, basically right now, they will not work because of the way that EMV is being implemented. You can only run that car transaction once and you can't use that transaction information again without running another charge. So effectively, that kind of does away with tabs as we know it right now. However, there are some terminals and some processors say that they will support tabs. And that is something that we're keeping an option open on. However, they because we've not confirmed with them whether, okay, they're going to support a tab, but are they going to still, is it going to be considered an EV transaction? So you might be able to do a tab and through, with that card and, and you might be like, okay, that's great. I can do the tab, but we don't know yet or they have not confirmed to us yet if it's going to be an EMV transaction at that point. And uh, until we get confirmation, tabs is basically not going to work. It's not going to be enabled as an option. But at the moment that we're able to confirm and that tell us, okay, it is EMV or it's not EMV, what we may then do is allow us as an optional thing for you to turn on and say, okay, well, it's not an EMV transaction but I'm going to ahead and allow it anyway. And then the merchant, of course, would then assume that risk should it be a fraudulent transaction because of the liability shift. So those were all the questions that we had right now. Again, if you guys still had more questions, you guys are welcome to give us a call back at our number. I'm putting it back on that screen. Uh, we're able to answer any questions with that weren't cleared up, anything that wasn't answered. 
Um, we're going to be doing another update right before the EMB cutoff happens, which is going to be right before October, uh, to guys give you kind of like a, a, the final debriefing of how things are going to launch. Uh, if there is any changes whatsoever, we'll guys, we're going to keep you guys updated. And um, even after it is implemented, we're planning to do an update as like a monthly update kind of thing. We might do a newsletter. We might do another video. Uh, basically, is that because this transaction is going to be kind of great. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't actually transaction. Talking about transactions here, uh, but this cut over of how things are done in the credit card processing end is something that's going to be kind of gradual. Um, they say in the industry, you know, talking heads, to, if you will, they say that even even as soon as the cutoff happens, not many merchants are going to implement it, not many process, not all the processes are going to be ready for it, and it's going to be like this gradual switch where people are are, are slowly going to be moving to these systems because of such a big drastic change, of course. So. As, as we understand that that's how things are probably going to work out in practice, we're going to be updating you guys as things go along because as things are up unfolding, they may, be, they may offer changes. And as you see already, like they already gave us one of the changes that might happen with a tip adjustment. So we understand that this is going to be like a, a something that's going to be ongoing. It's going to be kind of like a, us keeping on touch, in touch with our processors, keeping in touch with you guys with, with the changes that are going to come down the pipe. Uh, we'll be ready to... To, to basically us as Ordex, we're, we're ready to shift with whatever happens. We're ready to change whatever needs to be changed. Uh, I want to keep you guys updated on the loop so that you guys aren't um, out of the loop. You're not wondering, you know, what's going on. So that's all from me. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And you guys will get this recording probably in an email. Probably see it in the, in the messaging section for those that are Ordex customers that have access to that back office. Uh, until then, have a good one.